today. <laughs> Every one of you should have your hands up. <laughs> because the marijuana light compounds that we all produce have regulated everything in your life, even though you haven't known it, from the time of conception until the time of death. And in reality, in our modern world, because of how uh, things have changed over the past hundred years, in particular, just think back, you know, open sewers running down the streets, things like that, uh, better public health in general, uh, better nutrition, um, antibiotics, those are what I call good drugs. Most drugs, most pharmaceuticals I don't think are good drugs, but antibiotics are. Uh, because of those changes, the nature of our biochemistry is now inappropriate. Most people, as we age, have age-related illnesses. Those age-related illnesses include things like autoimmune diseases, neurocognitive dysfunction, Alzheimer's, for example, cardiovascular disease, and cancers. And all of those illnesses have a common underlying uh, imbalance in our biochemistry because we needed inflammation in order to fight the parasites and pathogens that were infecting us because of the fact that we were living in squalor. We were dying young and we were dying from infectious diseases. And now, a hundred years later, in a world that has changed so dramatically, we're dying from these age-related illnesses, no longer the infections. And those age-related illnesses all have the common underlying factor of inflammation being associated with them. And inflammation has certain biochemistry associated with it. So what I'd like to do is to give you a little bit of an underlying physics that explains uh, really about life. And if we understand a little bit more about the basic reality, what I call the physics of life, uh, then we can understand what health is, and we can understand what aging is, and we can understand why the cannabinoid system within us has its thermostat set a little bit too low. We need to increase our endocannabinoid activity because that's how evolution has selected for maintaining uh, basically the protective properties of turning down the inflammation as long as we don't need to fight infections constantly. So we're out of balance on a very fundamental level and that fundamental level is really manifesting these age-related illnesses because we're living longer. If, you know, if everybody's dying at 40, then you don't get the illnesses associated with being 60, 70, 80, 90, and whatever. So I want to give you a little bit of that understanding so you can really appreciate better what's going on and why cannabis has, to many, what appears to be miraculous properties. Well, in reality, they are miraculous properties, but for a very good underlying scientific reason. So if we can hit the first slide there. What we're going to look at is these cannabis oils, which are extracts of the plant. And I think some of the most dramatic examples that we're going to see, hit the space bar again, please. Uh, is that, oh, I can't see that I'm up here. Well, this, <laughs> you, you know, usually I have it in front of me and I can guide myself along. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll try to work that out properly. But where we're going to go is this. Because your endocannabinoid system regulates literally everything in your body, your immune system, digestive system, cardiovascular system, skeletal system, skin, bones, reproductive system, everything in your body is homeostatically regulated by your endocannabinoids. Endo meaning cannabis from within, endocannabinoids. As opposed to phytocannabinoids made by the plant, and as opposed to synthetic cannabinoids that people, pharmaceutical companies, are developing so that they can have patents on activities. And what we're going to see is that the fundamental underlying principle of Big Pharma and our medical industry today has to do with finding magic bullets. And it's my contention, based on the science that I'll present to you, that the whole concept of magic bullets is fundamentally flawed because of the nature of how we work. And as a result of that, we see that every year, 100,000 people die from taking their prescription medicines as they're supposed to take them. And how, uh, in so many cases, you know, you're taking one pill and another pill and another pill and another pill, all the counteract the side effects of the first pill, and then you develop kidney failure and liver, liver problems associated with metabolizing all of these, what's called xenobiotic chemicals, chemicals that we don't produce, they're produced in the laboratory rather than in nature, and they have all sorts of untold consequences that we find out often too late. 
And that's when the drugs go off the market again. So uh, that's what makes cannabis so unique. And it has an incredible safety profile. You know, if you take two aspirin, you get rid of your headache. If you take 30 aspirin, you die. So that's what's called the therapeutic index, the ratio of how much you need versus how much will kill you. So it's basically 15, 30 to 1, right? 15 to 1 with cannabis. You take, with uh, aspirin, you take 2, you're okay. You take 30, you die. With cannabis, they estimate it to be 40,000 to 1. So it's totally non-toxic in terms of being life-threatening. You cannot ever consume enough cannabis to die. So, which is a good thing, because what that lets people do in states like Colorado, where the people have voted for legalizing its medical use, and where uh, before the feds cracked down on you can't get a gun license if you have your cannabis permit, and all sorts of other tactics to impede the movement that's occurring with medical cannabis. And the reason the movement's occurring is because not only is it backed by science, but it's backed by all the people that are using it. The doctors that have become cannabis doctors are so happy because they're finally able to treat people and actually have them get off all these pharmaceuticals that they're on, get rid of the side effects that are causing them so much torment, and at the same time, actually improve their health. So it's very rewarding positions for physicians to see you know, the, this huge impact on people's health, including things like cancers disappearing. And, and I get chastised all the time. I can't, you can't ever use the word cure, because cure only means it's successful after five years, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, when you, when you see some of the pictures that I'll show you, and you know that you can create that effect by rubbing it on, for example, skin cancer, which is so prevalent down here in Florida, the longer you live, the more sun you've been exposed to, the more likely you come down with skin cancer. And you rub this stuff on, and depending on what skin cancer you have, basal cell, or a squamous cell, you can get rid of the basal cell in, in a few days, typically, uh, to a few weeks, depending on the case, whereas some horrendous squamous cells go on for months. But again, you'll see those results. So hit the button again there. Uh, these are just examples of what occurs when you wind up regulating everything with cannabinoids. Every time, for example, you get hungry, your body makes some endocannabinoids in the hunger centers of your brain, and you basically give yourself the munchies. And in terms of, uh, so that's your appetite. If you look at pain, you know, if you're hypersensitive to pain, then you need to make it less painful. If you actually have conditions that are creating pain, well then again, you want to make them less painful. Narcotics are great for acute pain. You're in the military, you get your arm blown off, you want those narcotics, no question about it. But do you want to be constipated for the rest of your life? Do you want to be addicted to narcotics for the rest of the lo your life? Do you want to destroy your family life because of your irritability from being constipated and a narcotic addict for the rest of your life? Cannabis is the solution for long-term use. What we're seeing in Colorado is that people who've been on really high doses of narcotics for years in many cases completely eliminate them or dramatically decrease their use. And the scientific evidence shows the fact that um, cannabinoids have pain relieving properties, they can work synergistically with narcotics, and that they can help get rid of the narcotic addiction by transferring more and more to cannabis if that suits you. And from what we're seeing, most people are very happy to be suited. So, uh, next one, please. It's not about money, not about war, it's all about goodness and what we're here for. I love you and everybody. I Tell you one thing, that is what's up Every single day, catch us fighting all these politicians Cause they never